In this lesson, we're specifically looking at appraising biotechnology data. Now, we've had this point pop up through the whole unit. We've been looking at different types of data all the way through. Now it's time to really focus in on what it's asking us to do. So the skill we're focused on there is about the appraisal. Okay, specifically, we're told it's to determine the success rate of a technique used to collect data. And everything we've covered so far in biotechnology is relevant to this. So we're thinking PCR, restriction enzymes, gel electrophoresis, DNA sequencing, and profiling. So conveniently for us, the guidance that's in place in the syllabus actually says these things. Okay, it's saying that the data for appraisal, you know, is all these things we've already seen. And current biotechnology could mean any one of these things. So we've talked about them all so far. Um, we'll look a little bit more about CRISPR in class. Given that the skill required for us is to appraise data, we have to have an understanding of what appraising even is. So the syllabus definition of appraise is this. Evaluate the worth, significance, or status of something. Judge or consider a text or piece of work. So again, this you know might not be for us, it might be for English. Just as an aside, this is the definition for the word evaluate. Make an appraisal. So in some ways, we're going around in circles, but there are also some really important ideas buried in both of these definitions. For example, look at the choices of wording in both definitions here. They're both asking us to consider the worth, the significance, or the status, or importance, right? That's, that's right there, the merit, the value, the significance, there they are. They're also asking us to make judgments, right? The judge is the make judge. Um, they're also making us, asking us to make judgments based on something. So in this, did criteria. So if I just remove all this kind of stuff here, it's probably a good idea to just sit with that for a moment and really think, hey, what is, what is this asking me to do? But it's judging based on a set of criteria in order for us to determine a success rate. And that's going to come in handy for all of us with all of our biotech data. So this is full credit to Dr. Gurian Aang from UQ for his approach to these questions and to Karen White from the Queensland Biology Teachers Facebook page for sharing her resources because our approach can be simplified into four nice easy steps. First, we're going to determine the measure of success, right? What is the measure of success we're looking for if we're saying we have to determine if something is successful? We have to identify and validate the control, right? All of these tests and the data we should provide should have some kind of control because we then need to identify the treatment group and compare it to what the control did. And then we need to draw some conclusions about whether something was successful or not. So let's explore this a little bit deeper. Firstly, determining that measure of success. What is the statistical analysis performed on this data? You have to understand your data before you even start. You've got to identify and validate the control, find that control sample. How did it do? Is it meeting you know, the criteria of success that we think we need to do? Identify your treatment groups then and compare it to that control groups and then come to some conclusions. Okay, that's what we're doing, appraising to see if our technology is successful. Now here's a work example. And again, before you attempt the question, determine what information you've been provided with. What is the data even about and what are the variables you're looking at? So when we're talking variables, that's that idea of success. What is the measure of success? So here it looks like we've got time versus percent activity. If we read through our STEM, you know, we've got a lot of, ooh, okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah. So then going through that process, we need to identify where this is. And in some cases, this will be scaffolded. In other cases, it won't be. Here, it's saying, okay, cool, what is the, the measure of success used? Well, that kind of identified it for us. Then it's saying, well, we need to validate the control. So what's the key response observed in the control? It's prompting you again. Then that last question says, compare cell lines A and B to the control. So you're doing that identify and compare, and you're drawing some conclusions. So another worked example here. Again, determine what the information was that you've been provided and what are the variables. Think about stepping yourself through each of these steps and say, okay, it's got no scaffolding, but I know I can work through this. So what is the measure of success? It says determine the success rate. I've got to think about that first. I've got to then validate my controls. Now up here in the stem, it says it's included a control and two mutants. So they're probably my test samples as well. I've got to compare my test samples, my mutant samples to the control, and then I've got to come up with a conclusion based on its success rate. 
So I do want you to stop and think, and I'll erase all this as well, stop and think and have a go at trying these questions yourself, and we'll try some of these in class as well, but it's following those steps each time. Okay. To appraise data from an outcome of current genetic biotechnology technique to determine its success rate. 